Uh, one last thing before we uh, head back. Let's talk about the Changeling House. Now, when you guys get back to the bus, if you look out the front windshield of the bus, you'll see a high rise right there pretty much in the center in front of the bus. That is where the Changeling House used to stand. It was torn down in the mid-70s, uh, 1974. Now, in the mid-60s, there was a Broadway composer that uh, was tired of the rat race in New York, and he also did some work in Hollywood. He was tired of the rat race in Hollywood, so he came to Denver to get away from it all, and uh, he was going to recharge his creativity. So he rents the Changeling House, wasn't called that. He rents this nice big mansion for $200 a month. Now, at that time, that was dirt cheap. But you've got a giant mansion with one guy. Every little creak, pop, anything would scare the crap out of him. I mean, his imagination started running wild in there. But after a while, he started hearing what sounded like a rubber ball bouncing down the stairs. He would be in his room, and there's a fireplace in his room, and he would hear conversations coming from the fireplace. So he's really getting creeped out by this house. He starts poking around, and in one of the closets in one of the rooms, he finds a hidden stairwell. So he goes up these stairs, and he finds a sealed off room. So he forces the door open, and a red rubber ball bounces out and goes down the stairs. He goes into the room, and he finds a cast iron tub, an old music box, and a child's antique wheelchair with cobwebs all over it, according to the trailer. <laughs> So, all hell starts breaking loose in his house. There's pictures falling off the walls, and, and it's just making all kinds of groaning and moaning noises, and it's really creeping him out. So, he knows that he has a spirit that's maybe a little torqued off. He uh, does a little bit of research in the form of seances. Now, through these seances, he finds out that the original family to live in this mansion had a young boy that was set to inherit $700 million when he turned 21. The problem is, is the boy was sickly. They didn't think he was going to survive that long. So they sealed him up in this room, and they adopted a similar-looking child to take his place, <laughs> the changeling. So you can imagine that this spirit might be a little, you know, pissy. So through a little more research, more seances, he finds out that the child has been buried in South Denver. Now there's been a house built over it, so he's going to have to go to this people, these people in this house and convince them to let him bust through their closet floor and dig under the house. Now he was going to find a gold medallion with the birth date of this child, this confirmation. At that point, with that confirmation, he was to go and tell the story to the world so this child could get some peace. So luckily, he's got a friend who's a screenplay writer. And they write up the story and they sell it to a Toronto film company. The Changeling, starring George C. Scott. Great movie, it's a lot of fun, I really recommend it. It's set in Seattle, next to Chessman Park. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a really, it is a fun story. Now the Angelina Jolie remake, not so much. They didn't stick to the storyline very well. So I don't recommend it as, as closely. Um, but we did some research of our own that didn't involve seances, oddly enough. And what we found out is that the family that originally owned the mansion was childless. The family that moved in after them was childless. However, the family that moved in after them was childless. <laughs> after that was the Broadway composer. Now, the thing is, $700 million is an absurd amount of money by today's standards. There was no one in Denver's history that had connections to that kind of money. That was just way too much money to be uh, a logical amount that you know they could get away with. So I'm not going to stand here and tell you that the changeling's not true. The changeling's not true. <laughs> um, but you got to take into consideration, anytime you have a movie that says, based on a true story, or inspired by actual events, it's not going to be very close to what the original story was anyway. So we really don't know if there was maybe a hidden stairway. We don't know if there was this sealed off room. We don't know if this Broadway composer actually did experience some of these spooky things that he claims he did. We don't know those things. But we have first-hand experience with this whole based on a true story thing. You see, we had a very interesting investigation up in Fort Collins. 
Um, and it was, for us, dramatic. There was some very bizarre things going on. Well, a production company came to us and we optioned the rights to have it made into a movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, this was kind of a... I'll stretch the truth a bit. This was kind of a typical investigation. Nothing, nothing overly Hollywood. And... Yeah, we insisted on keeping our names. That was our, our one stipulation, which was dumb and foresight, but... Or hindsight. Or, 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 yeah, that's not working. <laughs> anyway, um, I got to read the first draft of this. I didn't even recognize the story. It's gone from just an investigation to the demon code. So, by the time they actually make this, I hate to imagine what it's going to be like. So, don't go see it. It's called The Demon Code. <laughs> uh, on, on the bright side, uh, they did get Dwight Yoakam signed on to play Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be very interesting. Now, as we walk back towards the bus, you will see that there's a grate right over there. You can actually look down and see that there is indeed another floor underneath us. We're hoping the city of Denver will someday let us down there. But uh, right now we're stuck looking at it through a grate. Let's go get warmed up and get some more sangria.